Today we're gonna have a smackdown between Skyscanner and Google Flight. Which one is the easiest to use, which one gives you the cheapest flights, and which one is kind of reliably always going to give you the cheapest flights. We're gonna compare them both today, so let's go ahead and dive in. Let the fight begin! The first thing I wanna compare is the Explore tab. So the Explore tab on both of these is the place where you would go if you're not sure where you wanna go, you just know you wanna go maybe in this month or this month and you wanna see, okay, what is available to me on those days? Where could I possibly go in the entire world that fits my budget and, and when I'm looking to go? I wanna see which one of these is easiest to use. So let's go ahead and jump in and, and and see if we can tell a difference. So right now I'm on the Skyscanner page and the way to find their Explore tab is to scroll down here to the map and say, Explore our map. So what this does is it brings up the possibility of having the entire world. If we zoom out, you can see it's going to give all of the potential flights all over the world. Up here, you pick your airport that you're leaving from. It allows you to choose the month you wanna go. It also allows you to increase or decrease the price, the total price you wanna pay on your ticket so that you can narrow it by those parameters. I'm gonna leave it open uh, all the way up at the moment. And then also you can narrow it by nonstop, one stop. It lets you tell the, the difference between the two if you only want nonstop flights. So uh, this is kind of the basis and this is how it works. For Google Flights, where you would find their Explore destinations is also you look for the map, hit Explore destinations, and it brings up the world again, but it actually has a few different things that Skyscanner does not have. You can actually customize more on Google Flights than you can on Skyscanner. You can actually ch uh, check up to six months out. First of all, you're not narrowed by only choosing one month and hoping that it's the cheapest month. You can also choose the duration of your vacation. So you can say, I wanna, I'm going just for the weekend, I'm going for a one week, two weeks. What this does is it actually helps you compare a combination of flights because if you're going for the weekend, it might see that this particular weekend, Friday to Sunday is the best combo. Or if you're going for a week, it might say, okay, you leave on this Wednesday and come back on this Wednesday, that is the best combo. So it, it actually takes it a step further than what Sky Scanner does. To do a proper comparison, I'm going to pretend that we're leaving from Los Angeles. All we know is we want to go to Europe, but we don't really know where we want to go at all. Uh, we're just trying to get into Europe for the cheapest possible. So we'll go to any city. We just want to get into the continent as cheap as possible. Let's see how these two compare. Okay, so to do it in Google Flights is actually super easy. All you do is you come in here and you say Europe. And what it does is it brings you directly to the European continent, which is kind of handy. Uh, what I'm gonna do for time frame is I'm just gonna keep it open to all six months because what I wanna do is I don't really care what month we go, I'm looking for the absolute cheapest price. And then once I'm there, I'm gonna say I'm gonna be gone, uh, my vacation's gonna be two weeks because we're going to Europe and we wanna maximize our time there. Okay, so this has opened it up and now I can easily see all of the different cities and I can scroll through here and find the cheapest price. That's Google Flights. Now let's go over and see what Skyscanner does. Okay, Skyscanner does not allow you to narrow it down by where you wanna go. We would have to go over to Europe and zoom in in order to see the same map. And actually I'm a little too close, so let's back out. Okay, so once you're zoomed in, you are, you can see, you would just simply hover over all of the cities in order to find the cheapest price in Europe. Uh, now, the only downside is to be able to search all six months to find which is the cheapest month, the combination of cheapest month and the combination of uh, cheapest location, you would literally have to come in here and search every month and then go through and hover over the different cities and find out the cheapest the cheapest time. Okay, that being said, Skyscanner sometimes gives you a cheaper flight. So for instance, it's saying in January 2021, it looks like you can get London for 356 nonstop. Let's see what Google Flights did. They're searching all six months, so theoretically that London should come up. So let's see what happens when we click on London. So I went to the cheapest one on London that said it was $351 on Skyscanner. This is why I don't trust Skyscanner because I've had this happen multiple times. I click on what I think is cheaper than what Google Flights was offering me, but as you can see from the screen, when we clicked on that and go to the next set, the next level, now it's saying that the cheapest is 867 for the dates we wanna go. So how is this giving us our cheapest right? I just don't trust Skyscanner because this does this to me 
a lot. It doesn't always find the cheapest flight. But if we come over here to Google Flights and I clicked on what is presumably the cheapest to London according to Google Flights, it actually legitimately matches what they're saying the cheapest is. This is why I trust Google Flights a little bit more. Uh, the other reason that I like Google Flights more is I don't have to actually search month by month by month when I'm doing this. I don't have to come in here and check every month. I also don't have to come in, scroll to the area that I wanna go to, and then you know zoom in on that area, and then hover over everything. It's just easier. Uh, to find it here and to be able to put in my parameters right at the beginning, how long I want to go and be able to search what I want to search and get accurate information. So in this round, I'm going to say it goes to Google Flights hands down because you can't trust, it seems, what Skyscanner says is going to happen. Okay, round one to Google Flights. Let's go ahead and go to round two. So for round two, we're going to compare an actual flight. I'm gonna say we're gonna be leaving from Seattle and we wanna to go to Tokyo. Let's see who wins this round. Okay, so we're gonna say that we're going from Seattle and we wanna to go to Tokyo. Oops, help if I... And we're going to go to all of the Tokyo airports. Hi, hello, thank you. Uh-huh, I'm busy right now, so I need you, yes. Mm -hmm. Yep, okay. Okay, we're just gonna pick a fictitious date and just see who comes out the best. So for our purposes, I'm gonna say we're gonna go in November and we're gonna leave the 15th and we're gonna come back the 30th. So let's just keep it really simple. All right, that's start, while that's looking, I'm gonna go over here to Skyscanner and do the same thing. We're gonna go to Seattle, we're gonna go to Tokyo in any airport and we're gonna leave the November, where is it, 15th through the 30th. Just keep it at one person and let's see what happens. Okay. Google Flights, what did you find for me? All right, it looks like the cheapest flight, because in Google Flights, you can always notice the cheapest flight is in green, uh, but you can also scroll down and find other options. Like for instance, if you don't like this flight, this time or this date, you can always find other options. Uh, so that's 494. Let's go ahead and come over to Skyscanner and see what we found. And it looks like they're saying their best is 495, also on Air Canada, which makes sense. It's the same flight. Okay, so right now they're kind of neck and neck, but let's use some of the features in each to see who's gonna ultimately give me the best deal. Okay, so on Skyscanner, you, you simply have your flight here. The only alterations you can make is if you wanted to choose, you know, change your stops, or if you wanted to choose only certain airlines or arrive if there's multiple airports to choose to arrive from. That's the only alterations you can really make on Skyscanner. So let's go ahead to the next screen and see what it leaves us. If there's any other ways we can save more money in this scenario or check other options even would be great so that we can make sure we're saving more money. Um, so it's looking like uh, it's just is what it is. It's this flight, it's 495. You book it directly on Air Canada and that looks like it's the cheapest. Okay, so it's pretty straightforward, but I don't know, I think we might be able to do better. So let's go back to Google Flights. There are a few tricks with Google Flights that can actually help you save some more money. The first one I wanna look at is I want to go to the date grid. And I wanna look, cause this is a simple visual, if I change my date slightly, what maybe could I say, could I save some more money if I go on some different flights? And it's saying actually, even if I left um, on some alternate dates, it looks like it's still 494 is still the cheapest. And then if we go over and scroll, it looks like still 494 tends to be the cheapest in this particular month. Okay, but at least now I had the ability to compare it so that I know, okay, well, this is the cheapest rate for looks like, you know, month of November, December-ish, okay? So let's go ahead and uh, check something else. Let's also check nearby airports. Now, the reason I like Google Flights is because not only can you check multiple air airports in your destination, you can also check multiple airports from where you're leaving from. So if you're leaving from a city that has a lot of airports around it that you could potentially get to, it might give you some more options and might open up the price for you. So uh, for instance, if you wanted to go to Haneda or Narita, you can shoot you can look at it here, but also it gives you the whole rest of the island. Now in this case, it looks like they're all a little bit more expensive, 
but you know, sometimes Chubu uh, might be cheaper just depending on when you're going. Uh, so we can say that, okay, Narita is the cheapest. So we know that that's the cheapest there. The other thing I wanna show you, so that's destination airports where you can change it and find the cheapest airport to fly into, but you can also change up your origin airports and perhaps find something that is cheaper to fly out of. And in this case, okay, Seattle's 494, but look, if you come out of Portland, you, it's a, okay, yes, it's a three hour drive, but it might be worth it. Uh, you do save a little bit of money, but look, if you actually drive up to Vancouver, which is also about two hours from Seattle, you get it for 367. Your price for gas or, or maybe taking a train or something up to Vancouver might be cheaper and you might save more money by going from Vancouver. Now let's say that this is the case. Let's say I don't mind going from Vancouver. I would rather have the absolute cheapest price and I'm willing to make that drive and make that happen. So I'm gonna click Vancouver to add it to my itinerary and I'm gonna close this and we're gonna come back and I find that new uh, price point on my list. Now remember, Skyscanner didn't give me that opportunity at all. I could look between Narita and Haneda, but it didn't allow me to open it up. If I wanted to do that, I would have to go back to the beginning and search specifically for the Air Portland and Vancouver leaving from and uh, from other parts of uh, the island of Japan going into, but I would have to know those airports and I would have to make a bunch of different steps and check a bunch of different combinations in order to find the cheapest flight. Google Flights makes it easy because all of the tools you need, nearby airports and the date grid and everything else is all accessible from this screen. You don't have to keep going back and forth and re-entering information. Okay, so I would say round two goes to Google Flights. Even though they initially found the same, or you know, within a few cents, they found the same price, the tools that Google Flights has in order for you to maybe flex it a little bit, maybe go a little bit different day, a little bit different time, go to different airports to save money, makes it the better option. So I would say round two goes to Google Flights. Okay, for round three, I wanna explore the little extras that each of them have to see who, who has more opportunity for customization and more opportunity to save money and which one's a little bit easier to use in that realm. So let's go ahead and hit round three. So one of the things I could have done when I went into Seattle is to say any for Seattle airports and also add nearby airports. And I could have said any for Tokyo and said add nearby airports. I would need to know that up front so that I could explore those options. The other thing that I could have done is they have this date here where you can cho choose a specific date or you can choose the whole month. I could have said just the whole month of November. I also could have said just the cheapest month in general, so, but let, we're looking in November, so let's go ahead and compare it to that. Okay, so let's see what Skyscanner has. So they're saying uh, these are the cheapest rates. Now, when you're looking on this, this is the outgoing flight calendar. This is the coming back, the, the return. It's 248 each way. If we say we're gonna leave the 15th, and come back the 29th, see down here, it is saying it's still gonna be 495. So they haven't found anything cheaper yet. So let's go into the next screen and see maybe, okay, why isn't it not finding that Vancouver combination that we found on Google Flights? So let's see what comes up. Skyscanner takes forever. That's one thing I have to ding them on is every time I do this search, it seems to take an eternity. Freaking just speed it up, my God. Okay, it's, it's still looking. Okay, it's done. All right, so it's still saying 495 is the cheapest. Now let's scroll down and see what airports they were looking for. And they still only searched uh, Haneda and Narita, but I don't see that they're searching. You put in for them to search the other Seattle airports, but I'm not seeing that any comparison or any cheaper airports. This looks like even when we change the parameters, we're still getting the same price. Now let's look over at Google Flights. Now we already know we were able to check nearby airports and the date grid. So we were able to alter on this screen. We were able to, to find a better combination for us. One of the things that makes it better is they have a track prices for you. So you can toggle it on and it will actually email you when there's a price fluctuation. So, you know, if prices go down, you can jump on it and buy it. Or if prices are looking like they're going up, they'll track that for you, which is a very handy feature. If you don't need to buy it right now, if you can wait a little bit before you buy your ticket, because in, in hopes that it'll fluctuate and you might be able to get a better deal. So that's one thing I like about Google Flights. Uh, Skyscanner 
I thought they had one of those, but I don't actually see it on this screen. Uh, so you would probably need to find it in a different area and then toggle it on. The other thing about Google Flights I wanna show you is if you say we're gonna take this cheapest flight that we found for 495, we select that flight, or I'm sorry, 367. Uh, that was the outgoing, and then we're gonna re just keep with the cheapest and we're gonna choose this flight for our returning flight. Okay, so here, before I go into that, here the reminder is it gives you that flight and that's it. I can't change anything. And then it tells me, okay, go to Air Canada and book it. What I don't like about this is it doesn't tell me what class of airfare this is. Is this uh, economy basic? Meaning I don't get an assigned seat and I don't get any checked luggage. Or is this economy main where I can get some of those things? It doesn't tell me that here. I simply can go to Air Canada and book it and then I wouldn't find out until I got to Air Canada. What I like about Google Flights is when we search that cheapest flight, it tells me what I'm getting into. So it tells me that yes, 367 is indeed the standard basic economy. So I can get a seat selection, but I would have to pay a fee for it. I do, however, get chucked baggage. And if I wanted to upgrade, I could do so. And these are what the prices are. So I like Google Flights for this because it tells me initially what I'm getting into. And if I got to this screen and it said, I don't get anything and I have to pay a ton of fees, I would know ahead of time and maybe go back and pick a different flight if it would end up being more expensive to take this option. So that's why I like Google Flights because it gives you, it lays it out for you and tells you what you're getting yourself into. It also takes you to the same options to book it. And when you hit select with wherever you wanna book it, you know you're gonna be getting um, the same price as what they said. They don't change the prices in any way. So one other thing that Google Flights has that Skyscanner I have not seen on Skyscanner, and that is this. So say you find this 367, but you, you, you can toggle the track prices on again from this screen, so that's cool. But also, okay, so should I even buy it now or should I just watch this track prices and buy it when, you know, when the price goes down? They also have this tool down here. Let me move myself out of the way. That tells you, it's really cool because it gives you a visual representation of whether or not this is the right time to buy. And as you can see here, 367 is indeed low. And so it's a good time to buy. You can also see your price history. So you can see how it's fluctuated. And it looks like it's coming down and then slightly up. I mean, theoretically it could go lower, but all this all indicates that now would be a good time to buy. And now if you looked on this and the, the prices were all over the place, then you might wanna just watch track prices and kind of gauge from there. This is an extra perk with Google Flights that allows you to know that you're always getting the best combination and you're finding, gives you confidence to know you're finding the cheapest flight, um, I would say 99% of the time. Okay, there you have it. That was three rounds and all three rounds went to Google Flights. Now. Is this always 100% the case? You know, maybe not. There might be times you go on Skyscanner and you do indeed find the cheapest flight, but when you have to go and you have to go back and forth and compare months and compare airports and always be having to change your parameters and, and going back to the beginning and then coming back and searching, um, do you ever know, can you ever feel confident that you've gotten the cheapest flight? It would take you a much longer time to search on Skyscanner and be confident that you're getting the right price versus going on Google and using all of the different features that they have that make sure that you are checking all of those combinations and give you the confidence to know that you're finding the cheapest flight. Uh, so I would say in this SmackDown, I would say Google Flights is the winner. You know, let me know what you think. If, if you think Skyscanner is better, if you have found things on Skyscanner that I didn't cover here that you felt made it a better platform, please go ahead and comment below. Now, if you like Google Flights, if you agree that Google Flights is the winner and you want to learn more about those tricks that I showed you and other secret little hacks for getting the best and cheapest flight every time, go ahead and hit this video next, which will teach you all about Google Flights and give you all of the secret tricks and hacks to make sure you're getting that cheapest flight. And then if you like this video, uh, please go ahead and consider hitting that subscribe button. We'd love to have you join us. And I hope to see you on the next video. Take care and happy travels. Bye-bye.